What's up guys? It's Eric and Marcus from Rear Candy and we're back with the fifth and final round of the recent league challenge that we got to attend here in our hometown, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Our first league challenge is uh, coming to a close. Yeah. Uh, but So here we have on the left, Brandon Miesemer returning uh, from past couple rounds playing his Raikou Electro deck and I'm going to be playing Vespa Quinn Zeb Striker over there on the right. And it's interesting, if you've seen our previous rounds, which also featured Vespa Queen Zeb Striker, we keep saying that we kind of feel like this deck is favored. Yeah. On on paper, at least, but mm -hmm. Brandon keeps... Beating it. Yeah, like... <laughs> <laughs> it, it's really interesting. So, going into this final round, I knew what Brandon was playing, he knew what I was playing, and uh, I knew the people he was playing against, so I was a little worried. I was like, ugh, he's taken out two of these decks so far that doesn't bode well for me yeah but again i was kind of confident on the matchup on, on paper so i was a little worried but i felt decent about it here brandon is going to take a mulligan which i'm more than okay with mm -hmm. so uh, again if you guys haven't seen our previous rounds the reason on paper at least we feel like this vespa Quinn deck has the advantage is because both decks have one prize attackers, but the Vespa Quinn deck only needs a single attachment, whereas Raikou needs three, and it has to knock out its own electrodes in order to power up some attackers more quickly. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of why we feel like the, the Vespa Quinn deck is favored, especially since I play Garboder in this list. Mm -hmm. uh, very similar to the list that... Uh, what's the player? Was it... Um, Alex, Alex Hill? Yeah, yeah Alex yeah. Hill. Yeah, who's kind of, I guess, helped popularize this archetype now. Yeah. So it's uh, really interesting. There's There were th actually, I think, more players playing Vespa Quinn Zeb Strika at this tournament than any other deck. Yeah, the, like more people playing that than Eveltal. <laughs> what <laughs> like, was it? Because there were three Vespa Quinn players. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there was just two Eveltal. I, yeah, um, I only saw two. There might have been another one, but yeah. I only saw the two. Um, and I didn't even play against an Eveltal, and that's what my deck was teched for, <laughs> to beat Eveltal. I did get to play against a Mega Rayquaza, um, oh yeah, so quick complaint. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that that was that was nice. I I got to do that. You got your um, free one of the day. <laughs> yeah. So it was it was funny. Zeb Striker. I put the Klefki on the Zeb Striker. Took a knockout on a Ray, and he did Rattata to get the uh, the Klefki <laughs> off. So I was like, no, that's I like wanted the, most, the play to work. <laughs> that's like the most savage play of yeah an immune Zeb Striker against <laughs> Mega Ray. <laughs> yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I, I won't be able to do any plays like that against this Raikou deck since Klefki is a pretty much useless card. Uh, me and Marcus, we both played the same list at this tournament, so we both run yeah. Klefki, uh, you know, in the same counts and all that type of stuff. So right. Klefki's going to be going straight to the discard pile yeah. for this matchup. And here, okay, so I do get to go first. Have a couple Acrobikes in hand. That's nice to see. Mm-hmm. Get Acrobike, throw away Zeb Strika, dead card here. Getting rid of Vespa Queen. Oh, another Acrobike. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, okay, Garboder. so definitely want to get Trubbish and Garboder set up as quickly as possible to prevent Electrodes from coming online. Even though they give up a prize, mm -hmm. it does slow Brandon down a lot, not being able to use those. Uh, he is going to be reliant on just Max Elixirs. Yeah. So we're going to Ultra Ball, grab what I'm guessing a Shaman. Mm -hmm. Actually, it looks, looks like, like I'm... Eyeing a Combi, yeah. Okay, so I think what I planned on doing was grabbing Combi, using Ultra Ball to discard it, saving my Revitalizer. Mm -hmm. That way I could get back the Combi and Vespa Quinn at the same time. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of my thought process here so i'm pretty sure that's what i do i grab the combi and then i just go back in uh and grab a shaman uh, discarding a special charge which kind of hurts yeah just because the whole deck is reliant on just four dce right but i'm sure i have another one in there because the deck does run two special charge mm -hmm. so yeah like i was saying we're going for this shaman here just going to try to go through our deck a little bit quicker, get some more Pokemon in the discard pile. 
since Vespa Queen does 20 plus 10 more for every Pokemon that is in your discard. Yeah. So here, this is actually a pretty solid hand so far. We're going to use Unknown for one. Uh, I could have attached the Klefki from hand yeah. to the Unknown to get an extra Pokemon in the discard pile, but I kind of almost like the option of being able to uh, attach Klefki to this Trubbish if yeah. I whiff Floatstone, so I think that might have been my thought process here. Right. So here, benching another Combi, and I kind of want to get... Oh, and actually going for Lysander. Do okay. I not have Sycamore? Oh, I do. Yeah. Okay, I think my thought process here was, well, I can't attack anyways. Mm -hmm. I'd rather get Raikou up here and prevent things like Max Elixir. Yeah. So here, if I have a way to retreat this Klefki, um, I should be able to get a knockout if we can draw into DCE as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, Brain didn't really have much going on in his first turn, so I'm feeling pretty decent. So here's just checking what Pokemon we have in the discard pile. And here we opt to attach the Klefki, DCE, and then just Sycamore away that Blitzel. So we really need a float zone here, get this Klefki out of the active spot. And that hand is trash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't see any supporters for next turn. So this is going to be a bit of an awkward one. <laughs> yeah. Here I'm just opting to pass. And Brandon is going to have a little bit of a window of opportunity to kind of start getting set up now. Mm -hmm. So he's going for a Raikou. So even though he is having to just manually power up his board, uh, you know, my deck's kind of come a little bit to a screeching halt, and I'm not really putting on much pressure. So here he's actually in a Lysander Garbodor, and that's a really good play since I don't have a Floatstone, so yeah. <laughs> that really sucks. So here I'm just going to use Klefki, buy another turn so Brandon can't use abilities, and hopefully can just top deck out of this hand. Yeah. Um, yeah, Vespa Queen normally is super consistent this is actually the first game i was telling marks this was my first game where the deck just kind of like bricked on me for a few turns yeah so here brandon is getting a raikou on the bench uh powered up as well so whenever he knocks out this vespa queen on my bench he will be able to or whenever i knock out his active with my vespa queen mm -hmm. he will have another one ready to go to get the return knockout yeah But honestly, I think it's still anyone's game at this point. He's having a bit of an awkward start, and my hand is still bad. So Yeah. Um, I do have a DCE, but I don't know if we should attach it or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what don't, you can do, too. Like, I'm thinking about playing down the Blitzel, but... Yeah. Well, I guess my thought process, well, Garbodor's probably going to get knocked out, so that might open up a play for Brandon to mm -hmm. uh, do a Shaman, and that might give me an easy prize with Zeb Strike at some point. Yeah. Or maybe I just wanted something to promote if I continued to draw dead. But right. here Brandon did Enna, so I was so stoked on that. Yeah. It is unfortunate my Garbodor's going to go down, though. That's That's really big, honestly. Okay, so we're going to promote our Vespa Quinn, and can we get a knockout here? This thing has a Fury Belt on it, too, which is a huge pain. So we're just going to end putting Brandon at a lower hand size, I believe. Mm -hmm. But really, I, I don't know what we need to get here. Probably a Forest of Giant Plants to bounce this stadium. That Parallel City needs to go, because uh, it is reducing our damage output by 20. So, unknown, unknown. <laughs> and, ugh. So, do we have enough to get a knockout? I'm going to guess no, because we have to do 180. Yeah. And I don't think we have 14 Pokemon in the discard. I could be wrong, but I don't think that is enough at all. Looks like there's nine... Yeah, so if we have a DCE in hand, I would like to do like a Sky Return play. That would be nice. 
Um, Debating on benching, I guess, another shaman. Yeah, but I think we just have to two-shot this guy. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, the plus side is, even though our Vespaquin will go down, it will put more Pokemon in our discard pile. So that is the nice thing about this deck, though. Even though when your guys get knocked out and it hurts your board position, yeah. it does fuel your attackers. Mm -hmm. And here they're making it rain League promos on us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he looks like he whiffs a Max Elixir. But he is going to go, it look like, grab another Voltorb so just to try to start setting up another uh, electrode and here's gonna take a knockout with Thunderlance 50 plus 20 more for every lightning on him so definitely a knockout on Vespaquin yeah and luckily we have teammates though so that will be really nice we can grab any two cards so definitely a double colorless energy and maybe a forest of giant plants potentially to bump this stadium mm-hmm I mean, we definitely get a knockout here, but uh, I don't know. We probably actually want to keep this stadium since he can't bench that Voltorb we grab. So I didn't notice the other card that I grabbed off this, but you know, double Carlos and then maybe, oh, probably another Comey because this Vespa Queen is going to go down. Okay, so double colorless, and we'll just see a beer revenge for the knockout. And I actually hit another combi, I think it is, which is good. That way we can keep streaming these Vespa Queens for the rest of the game. So here it looks like Brandon is going to grab a Versus Seeker off the Trainer's Mail. And. So here he's going to verse here for Lysander, going for Shaman, and enhanced hammering yeah. on DCE. So that was definitely a really good play mm -hmm. on Brandon's part. But luckily, I have a Sycamore with a hand full of useless Pokemon. So yeah. we will probably be able to take a knockout here on... Well, no DCE. I would say that, <laughs> but no DCE. Uh... And actually, that really... That really hurts because now Brandon can go down to, I think he only has two prize cards left. Yeah. <laughs> that is bad. That is bad. Yeah, a little bit rough. So I think that was probably the big whiff of the game. Um, you know, despite those a couple turns when I was drawing dead, I don't even think that's that horrible. But not being able to attack once we have... You know, our board finally set up that is really bad, like at this point in the game. Yeah. So we're just going to promote uh, Blitzel and Pass. Okay, and he is going to use Electrode, knock it out, attach it as a double lightning, take a knockout here. Uh, and here I top deck DCE. <laughs> so this is kind of frustrating because. I have Versus Seeker. I can Lysander Jolteon, take a knockout, and be at one prize. Uh -huh. But then Brandon can just knock out our Vespa Queen. So right. I was one attack short of actually taking the game here. And uh, I think at this point in the season, I think I have to get first at any league challenges to get CPs for Worlds. Yeah. And so I really don't gain anything by losing this match, mm -hmm. uh, which is unfortunate. But here, I'm going to go out and at least by taking... Out this Jolteon. Oh, so and, he hammers and, you just because. Yeah, like a boss. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Brandon's going to take down every yeah. Vespa Queen's up striking deck at this tournament. The the beekeeper. Yeah, Brandon <laughs> Meesum or the beekeeper. <laughs> so, yeah, Brandon ended up did taking mm -hmm. uh, first at this league challenge. I think Amy Valtal deck took second. Yeah. And then myself at third and Marcus at fourth. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Eveltal still some squeaked its way in the top four with all this lightning. <laughs> yeah, hate. it's Eveltal and then three Eveltal hate decks <laughs> in top four at this league challenge. So basically, so yeah, um, I'm glad that we got to record this. Uh, you know, some of our other league challenge videos I've noticed we have a lot of like Eveltal decks and yeah. you know a lot of kind of the standard stuff that people expect to see. But yeah, Raikou's a little bit more obscure. Mm -hmm. Vespa Coin is only now kind of becoming a more 
uh, popular archetype, this right. Zebstrika variant. So I'm glad at least we got to get some more roguish type of decks to be featured mm -hmm. for this tournament. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, guys, if you haven't seen the other videos, there will definitely be links either in the description or on the video somewhere for you guys to check out the previous rounds if you want to give those uh, a watch as well. But as usual, feel free to like and subscribe. Don't forget to check out our merch over at rarecandytcg.com. Pick up a play mat like that uh, boss mystic one I was playing with yeah. in this in this match. Help support the channel and mean a lot to us. But uh, with that, we appreciate you watching, and we will see you for the next one, okay?